I'm still interested, uh, I'm breaking away here of this current thought now, in uh, uh, your idea that there has been our spirits on other planets and that they have come. I'm still interested in how they came and, and uh, what the uh, life was there. Is it similar to the way we know it here? And is there, then there must be these spirits existing out somewhere now. All right. Life on other planets, despite lots of views to the contrary, is very similar to what we have here now. I, and has always been that way. It's very similar? Now, you're not, are you referring to the planets of our solar system or possible planets of other solar systems in other galaxies or uh, other solar systems in, uh, uh, with other stars of this galaxy? All right. It would include some of the planets in this system and planets of other systems and other galaxies. And, of course, uh, if you're insisting that there is life similar to ours and pl other planets of this solar system, you'll run against many noted astronomers and uh, people who are in uh, physics and biology that would say it would be impossible to have life as we know it mm -hmm. on other planets of this solar system. Uh, Mercury is too hot. Venus is... Uh, uh, covered with a cloud we don't know too much about the surface and then mars could have life but uh, uh that's an enigma which we don't know of and jupiter of course is too large and too massive uh, people couldn't even uh, people couldn't even walk around as we know because they'd be too heavy well uh very briefly man has ways of adjusting to various kinds of environments and uh I can't go into too much about that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, now let's move on to, you mentioned, uh, as we were talking here, about the process of au auditing, and uh, is, uh, you have, you mentioned the, the, the instrument, that uh, this uh, instrument you, you use. Well, there is a, an electronic instrument which we use in Scientology, which is an assist helping an individual to recall his memories. It's um, after the design of a Wheatstone Bridge, and it uh, indicates area where there is emotional charge, and these are the prime targets. Any area that does have emotional charge is an area that the individual is not clear on, and by getting the person to look in that area and to talk about that area, we clean up the emotional charge which is stored there. Is this a electro what do you call this instrument? A it's called an electrometer. An electrometer. Or an e meter. An e meter. That's abbreviating for right. elect. Mm -hmm. Now you mean it's a, it's a probe? Is there uh, electrodes that you place on areas of the body? Well a person simply holds two ordinary cans, soup cans. Soup cans. In his hands. Uh, soup can. You mean uh, like a oh, Campbell soup Campbell can? Soup cans. Uh, this is not a commercial station, but uh, does it have? It doesn't matter what kind of cans. Doesn't there. Just matter what kind of any, cans. Just two cans. You yeah. and a person would hold them in his hands. Does it have a label on or the label? No, the label is off. Okay, regular, just ordinary soup. Ordinary can. soup. Can. It can just be any kind of a can. That's right. All right. Doesn't matter about the size. No. Just any no, size just can. Comfortable in one's hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gadget has. A small radio battery inside. Is the is the cans are they they're electrically? Attached. They're attached by wires. One wire uh, coming out. Can. One wire comes out of the can, and That's another right. wire comes out of the can, and there's two wires. Then, yeah. and then they're attached, they're attached together. So that then there's one lead. Then, in That's other words, right. and that goes into your uh, these uh, cans and serve as the probes, as the electronic contact with That's the body, right. and they have to be in the hands. I mean, could you put them in any other part of the body? Well, you can put them on the soles of the feet anywhere where there's a lot of pores. Oh, I so see. So it would be the palm of the hands or the soles mm -hmm. of the feet. I have a lot of pores in my face that are open mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, and, uh, and this uh, instrument... This instrument acts on this principle, that these mental image pictures, which have gotten keyed in, mm -hmm. in re-stimulation, impinge themselves upon the physical body, because they themselves are an order of physical mass of a different wavelength is this than the, the this is is this the connection between the spirit and the physical body that's right uh, and it's uh, how are they connected through nerves or, or what kind of connection no, is there no it, it's a different order it's a different order of physical universe 
but nonetheless is physical universe of a different wavelength than, say, this table. Uh, am I right then? Is this spirit? It's not uh, this spirit that we have is not lo located in any specific place, but it's all over at the same time as the physical body is all over. Well, it's located. It's usually located in the head, but doesn't have to be. A person could be in his body, or he could be outside his body. The, 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 the spirit the could be outside yeah. the body? Yeah, the could be you out. mean, let's just say I was one of those cases, and you mean my spirit could be up on the wall somewhere, and I could, it could have control of my body, or, and walk around at that same distance? Right. Or? It's a misnomer to call it my spirit. It's actually you. Uh, well, you're the being. Oh, this is See, getting weird now. Yeah. I can't... Uh, you mean to tell me that a nice spirit could be uh, floating above... It doesn't no, have to no. be the same distance? You could. Or me, all right, me, could be floating around somewhere and just walking with me? Right. Does it have to be at the same distance or can it move around? It could move around. It could even travel miles and miles away? It's possible. Even to another planet? Right. Now, what kind, uh, what kind of wave is it? Now, we speak in terms of electromagnetic radiation. There's light that's electromagnetic mm -hmm. radiation, radio waves, television waves. Uh, is this electromagnetic radiation? or? Well, essentially, the being is non-material. Yes, well, I understand. But, it, but he it, does have trappings. You know, he has lived and he has accumulated certain um, experiences. And um, he has kind of, in a sense, degenerated. And to the degree that he has, he is, has come to identify himself with the physical universe, he does have a wavelength. Now, this wavelength is in the direction of the ultraviolet band. Uh -huh. and, and further, these mental image pictures are also in the direction of the ultraviolet band. And they are much more solid than he is. And uh, what your uh, e-meter does is to pick up actually the, uh, the radiations from this... Uh... No, not the beam. It picks up the pictures, the trappings, the creations. What form does it take when you... So you have the cans in your hand and the wire going into the... Is it, is it a meter? Is it a meter? It's a meter. Wave? It's a meter. It's a galvanometer mm -hmm. type setup. And it actually picks up the effect on the electrical conductivity of the body of these creations of the being, essentially mental image pictures of the past, which we call facsimiles. Mm, this is getting rather interesting here. Uh, and you can... Uh, how do you know what area it is if you just hold the cans in your hand? All right, well, the individual behind the e-meter directs the show. And he would direct the individual to start talking about a particular area or a particular person in the individual's life. Mm -hmm. And watching the manifestations on the meter, the Scientologist or the auditor can see where the individual has had experiences which have accumulated emotional charge. Now, is this uh, e-meter readings, are they recorded by means of a, a, no. a, a long sheet of paper? No, they could be, but they're not usually. I'm thinking of uh, a similar idea that brings my mind when you hear, uh, see a lie detector. That mm. has the same, mm. similar type of electrodes that are placed on mm -hmm. the hands, right. and uh, they ask certain questions, and the emotional reaction to those questions uh, are, you know, brought out by... Uh, slight, very slight right. nerve uh, uh, fluctuations with right. Well, this is a, a recorded an instrument a similar to a lie detector, but actually it works on a different principle. It works on the principle of measuring changes in the electrical conductivity of the body. Now, a small current from this radio battery is fed into the body and through. And these mental image pictures impinging themselves on the body alter slightly the conductivity of the body. Mm -hmm. And it's these variations that we're interested in. Now, when these, one of these pictures is superimposed over the body, the meter takes on a certain characteristic read. Now, by following through on this read, an incident can be brought to the 
subconscious mind. Usually, the incidents are not fully unknown to the individual, but there are parts of that incident which the individual wasn't alert to. And by this directive method, we ferret out all of the aspects of the incident such mm -hmm. that the total incident is available to the individual. I say when the meter uh, uh, goes, uh, it so goes only one way, right? It goes up. Well, no, it goes up and down and around and it uh -huh. jiggles. And, and so when it like uh, goes to a high or real low reading, uh, the auditor stops at that point and tries to probe into the, that area. the moment when that he area. was talking where exactly. that meter went up. Uh -huh. and, uh, and in that uh, talking, the person will get up right. and things. Now, I still don't understand what, how, what the exact physical connection between the spirit, which, as I now understand, can be anywhere, and the actual body, the physical body, and where the meter is really reading. Well, as I say, the meter is measuring the electrical conductivity of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, the body's electrical conductivity mm -hmm. is altered by the impingement of these mental image pictures, which are, to some degree, unknown to the individual. In other words, any incident in a person's life which he doesn't have full and accurate recall of will cause an electrical phenomena on the instrument. But actually what you're measuring is the changes in the electrical And these activity. pictures can also be of the past, past, the past lives, yes. way, back. Yes, way back. And do any of these, pa these past lives, I understand, have an effect on our life now. It's just as our, let's say, up to my birth, all the things, all of my physical stimuli, everything has had an effect on my life to now. It's, you know, the environment. I am brought up on that environment. Right. But I'm also influenced by the all the environments of the past. Right. Well, not all of them, just those which are in re-stimulation. In other words, certain ones are impinging now, and others are not. Now, the biggest majority of them are not impinging at this time upon the individual and affecting and making for his personality. Oh, but uh, they are still there. They're dormant. They're uh, in, right. uh, in They're this dormant. unconscious, right. uh, or what, what do you call it? Mind. In the mind. But certain ones are. And what causes those certain ones from the past to impinge on the current life? All right. Similar experiences occurring to the individual from an emotional point of view, from an action point of view, would trigger in these past incidents. Uh, like similar incidents now that it happened back right. in another period yeah, are trigger in these past ones and uh, have its effect on the individual. Mm -hmm. And then the purpose of Scientology then is to to gain the complete and full uh, memory memory of Easy. each and every one of the past lives as well as the one. Well, well let's say if now you're interested in well, the present. Immediately, one. we're interested in the present life. Mm -hmm. And immediately, we're interested in keying out or destimulating these incidents which are impinging themselves upon the individual. From the present, past? From anywhere in the past. Uh, in other words, the purpose of Scientology then is to know what is bothering us now and to get rid of all of those that have come to us from the past? Right. Why? Uh, well, to leave a person clear in present time. In, in other words, words such a that pure, his thinking, let's say, I'm such that use... his thinking is appropriate to this moment. Now, we all are appreciative of people behaving in inappropriate ways. Well, the effect of these past moments on present time would cause an individual to behave in ways which are not quite appropriate to this moment, to say things which don't gel well with the present situation. And to the degree that the individual is not communicating alive, flowing in this moment, to that degree, is he being influenced by these past moments, identifying them, straightening them out, understanding the time of the key in more clearly will lift them from in re-stimulation. And leave, because once an incident has keyed in, usually it stays keyed in. Mm -hmm. All right? And it continues to have its effect on the individual. I guess we've been talking that long. I didn't realize it. I might uh, mention to those who are listening and just tuned in or have been listening for a while that we are speaking with uh, Reverend Stanley Stromfeld, who is the organization secretary of the founding Church of Scientology at 200 West 24th Street in New York City. Um, 
you know, it's getting back now. We have m more time. Uh, I ha I think I have heard someone mention somewhere that from the time of conception until birth, uh, those mem uh, that someone can, uh, uh, that your mind is actually operative or your being, spirit is actually operative during the conception period and during the, uh, the nine months, let's say, let's say you're in the womb and you're uh, reacting to uh, things in the outer environment even then? In a certain sense, uh, this is true. Actually, the mind, which is active, is actually a, a different mind than the being himself, because the being isn't usually around during this period. But when he does enter the body around the time of birth, he takes on, in a sense, incorporates these things and is susceptible to these things being re-stimulated. So in other words, let's say if something is said that's, uh, let's say like uh, an auditor is saying uh, or trying to probe during a uh, an auditing session, if something of that order is said while a being is in the womb, or not the being, but the mm -hmm. physical being is said, and that stimulates something, can that have a, uh, an effect on the later life? I mean, after birth. Right. But how, how is that possible if those auditing receptors are not, are not even developed? I mean, the, uh, you know, in the, in the growing process within the womb, uh, all these stages have to take, and if they're not fully developed, how can they even react to that? In other words, I'm asking, is this spirit or something, does it necessarily have to have a physical being to be able to do the things that we know? See, hear, speak. It doesn't? No, it doesn't. Does that mean that my spirit that's floating up there somewhere, that doesn't, how can that have the ability to speak and to, uh, and to, uh, to see and to hear it? I mean, I'm, I know it's scary, all right, but it's so, all right? And in other words, I, I was able to speak before I was born? I mean, not, not excluding these... Well, the uh, potential is there. The potential is how is the potential there? I mean, physically, yeah. I can't speak without vocal cords, a mouth, and to be uh, grown. Well, for instance, if one would close their eyes, with some people, they would see this physical room. To some people, if they closed this, their eyes, eyes, they could see they it? They would see the physical room. And other people would not see anything, but say the inside of their skull. And other people would see a memory picture of some past time that they may be familiar with or they may not be familiar with. And all that's necessary for an individual to do is to close his eyes and to take a look. Now the experience is different with different people. And that's why it's sometimes difficult to get across to a person who himself does not have perception without his physical eyes that it's possible. But this spirit, I'd say, uh, waiting outside the womb to, or I don't know if it's waiting outside the womb to enter my body from a previous life, the pictures that he would be seeing or the, picture, or the things that he'd be saying could only be geared from the former life and not because the, firm, the present life isn't here yet. All right. But two perceptions are possible. One, the perception of present time, and two, the perception of a, of a memory. So that this uh, person is actually all that he will be when he is born, before he is born. Uh, in, in a certain sense, yes. In other words... The attributes that he has are there at all times. And uh, these originated, uh, were, now, how, how many, how long ago, let's say how far back in history, in the many, many lives, the many, many past does this go? Was there an origin? Was everybody perfect? And how many people were there to begin with? Or how many beings were there to begin with? Well, some of these are hard questions to answer. Yeah, well, I mean, I like, don't know a thing. For this universe, for this physical universe, there was a beginning. You mean, you're speaking of the Earth as a planet of the solar system. No, not as the er of the Earth. But there is this physical universe. 
which we're familiar with. Which and you're including uh, our galaxy and the galaxies that we can see by pointing mm -hmm. out to the sky. And there is a, a point of inception of this physical universe. Of all of this. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, each of us is contributing to the existence unknowingly, even at this moment, to the existence of the physical universe. Well, just the fact that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, if I pick up this pencil, I have contributed to some action, some energy of motion. Right, but there is a creativeness which exists within the individual, mm -hmm. which contributes to his, to this physical universe being here. Uh, are we getting to the idea, uh, we only see things because we think we see them, well, like this ashtray is there, because in my mind I'm creating it, because I know the word ashtray, and uh, if I, it, actually nothing is really here, everything is in the eye. I mean, I mean, this is a school of psychology, a school of thought that uh, by closing my eyes without having anything visually perce uh, percepting, it's not there, really. I create everything I see, or everything I touch, everything I feel. No, it has an existence of itself. In addition, you created being there, but it has an existence of itself. And um, on some level, on some very, very unconscious level, we're, we're contributing to its being there in the physical sense. But only to ourselves or? No, for everyone. Okay. Well, uh, I'd still like to uh, talk about this, uh, pre excuse me, Mike, the predetermination, but. Uh, We'll just leave all that now and ask you in these closing minutes, what then does Scientology, the religion, do? What is the ultimate goal? To have everyone see themselves or to clear uh, their minds of of the past? Or uh, it is, as you say, to uh, to know thyself. Is that... Uh, well, it follows from the expression of Socrates, for one to know oneself, which involves being aware and alert to what one is doing from moment to moment. A clear is an individual who has examined this lifetime's memories to such an extent that they're not hidden from view and therefore are not capable of impinging themselves upon the individual and affecting his behavior and his thinking patterns. His health and his sanity depends upon this. To the extent that a person's memory is recovered to that degree, um, is he clear? And a full recall of this lifetime's memories would uh, leave a person in a position where he could participate in present time, continue to do the things that he is doing. Then could he be able to foresee, predict things, have uh, profit powers, more or less? Well, primarily, we're not interested in powers as such. What, what is the ultimate goal? Is there a heaven, a nirvana, or something? The ultimate goal is to be able to live this life and to be able to recognize that one is making and creating his situations and hence to direct them how he would like and to be alert to the fact that he is affecting other people and this is uh, when he has a clear knowledge of what the past was. Now, is there anybody in your uh, church that has reached that stage? Well, each of us is approaching that level. And How long does it take usually? Well, with concentrated effort, a matter of months, a person can accomplish the level of clear. Clear, that means? A per where a person has cleaned up the memories of this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Has anyone gone past that stage and started uh, looking back on the past, uh, way past the other lives, other existences? Yes. Could you briefly tell us about some of those experiences? Well, the thing to appreciate is that people have lived before. The forms that they have assumed are very similar to the ones that we have now. Uh, prior to this lifetime, 
person was living and existing in a human body, usually, and participating in the usual things that people do. In other words, the history book is full of our past identities, identified or not. Have you found anyone that, let's say, uh, you know, fought in the Civil War and that didn't recall anything from any incident? You know, like Bridie Murphy, let's say, we they checked her out and they found that, uh, I, I don't know, I guess they didn't find anybody. But uh, it's nothing, I mean, can you pinpoint it down to exact... Uh, well, some people feel that they have uh, uncovered specific areas. And um, has any of these uh, areas proved uh, true? Well, the more recent they are, the more they can be proven. The further back they go, the more difficult it is. Mm -hmm. Well, give us a, a, a recent example, then. Well, myself and other people have recalled what they have done in the last life. Oh, really? Tell me, what, 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 what were you doing in the last life? Who were you in the last life? Well, in the last life to this one, I was a boxer. Really? In this city. You were a boxer and, in this uh, city? I fought in the old Hippodrome. It used to be on 6th Avenue and really? 43rd Street. And, um, Did you win any fights? I won fights. And uh, the sequence of events is uh, fairly clear to me. Oh, please go uh, uh, tell them. Was, I mean, this is really fascinating. I, 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 I don't mind um, talking about it. But, um, Why, does it conjure up uh, No, it's not so thoughts? much that. It's that um, experiences like this are best communicated when an individual himself has already experienced something similar himself. Uh -huh. All right? And uh, this could have on other people... I mean, to introduce the idea that people have lived before mm -hmm. is one thing, and it gets people thinking. But there's lots of things that they that come into view in their minds, and without picking up what comes into view to their mind going on, gets to be a kind of restimulative situation. And there is an audience here, and not uh, being able to see the faces of the audience and to pick up their responses to these words, yeah. I'd uh, prefer at this time not to. Yes, but we could uh, tell the people now. I. I uh, you have uh, free uh, classes or uh, uh, speeches? Well, at the church, uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the mm -hmm. evening at 7.30, uh, we have free classes to introduce Scientology to the public. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, we tell people um, some of the background to Scientology, mm -hmm. and we tell them about the procedures that we follow and some of the things that we are working on to help people grow. Particularly at this time, we're interested in the subject of study. And we are seeking to improve people's ability to study. Now, fundamental to every activity in life, a certain amount of studying is necessary. And people get in, involved in areas, and they have interests, and they have hobbies and talents. They study subjects at school, and um, they're succeeding to some degree, but where they're having difficulty, we are in a position to help them ferret out the cause of that difficulty. Mm -hmm. For example, students at school is uh, a group that we like to uh, work with. And uh, for example, a student having trouble with mathematics, we discover that early on in their study of mathematics... I have trouble with mathematics. All right. That there's an area where the difficulty began and we would use the e-meter to help the individual pinpoint that area mm -hmm. where the difficulty began. Because sometime prior to that area of difficulty and confusion, there, there was a term used, a word was used, which was not understood. Mm -hmm. And that made for a mystery regarding that word. And that mystery tended to snowball. I see and have its effect uh, upon the entire subject because that use that word was probably used time and time again and the individual not understanding this um, got tired of the, uh, the subject and got bored with the subject and oftentimes lost interest in the subject. 
Well, we have within the technology of Scientology a technique for recovering areas which an individual is not doing too well in mm -hmm. or in which he has lost interest in. And at the basis of it is always a misunderstood word or a misunderstood term. By pinpointing the area of the difficulty and doing that well, the word almost immediately pops into view. And then with the aid of a dictionary and uh, textbooks and things like that, uh, we go in there and establish for the individual the meaning of this term. And almost immediately, the whole subject becomes alive again. Mm -hmm.